It was a splendid morning on the island of Sodor. James was feeling very pleased with himself. His red paint gleamed in the sunshine as he sped along the line. He reached the junction just as Percy puffed in with some freight cars. James was surprised to see him. What are you doing here, Percy? You should be at the station by now. I know, sighed Percy. These cars have been troublesome all morning. That's no excuse, Percy. Nothing should stop us. Sir Topham Hat relies on us to be on time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. And James puffed importantly away. Bossy buffers, muttered Percy. James arrived at the harbor. It was market day. The harbor yard was filled with the sweet smell of fruit from faraway lands. The fruit was delivered in big ships. James watched as strawberries, oranges, melons, and bananas were carefully loaded onto his cars. Then he set off for the station on the main line. On the way, he met Thomas. Really reliable, that's me, panted James. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Goodbye. What was all that about, gasped Annie and Clarabelle. That was trouble, trouble for James. Just wait and see. Percy was back in the yard and busy shunting. He had the cars in good order and was making up for lost time. But the station master had bad news. What's happened? asked Percy's driver. James's brakes have jammed. We need Percy's help right away. Percy quickly set off to the rescue. James was stuck on the line and looking glum. Percy couldn't help laughing. Got yourself in a bit of a jam, eh, James? A sticky situation? Be quiet. It's not funny having jammed brakes. And not very reliable either. I'm surprised you let it happen, James. Nothing should stop us engines. That's enough, Percy, said the driver. Can you push these cars? Of course I can. There's no time to lose. James has done too much of that already. James angrily hissed steam as Percy was coupled to the cars. Off we go, said Percy. I'll have to go fast to get there in time. Those big engines are so unreliable. Be careful, Percy, called his driver. But Percy was in a hurry. He didn't see that the switch had failed and that he had been diverted into a siding. Look out, Percy, shouted his driver, and applied the brakes. But it was too late. The driver and fireman had jumped clear, but squashed fruit squirted all over Percy. Sir Topham had arrived. Percy, you are not to blame for the switch failure, but I do not run a jam factory. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. And Percy squelched sadly away. That night, the shed was silent. James and Percy felt very sorry for themselves. At last, Thomas spoke. You know, he said to no engine in particular, there's more than one way to get jammed. We all learned that today. Still, there was silence. What's more, we also learned that sometimes when engines help each other out of a jam, things can still go wrong. So, said a voice, so, that means we learned a lot today, and therefore... Then came a chorus. We're really useful engines after all. One day, Thomas was at the quayside of a small village. The early morning catch of fish was being loaded into his trucks. The work took a long time. The fishermen were using old equipment and Thomas was worried. I'm going to be late for Henry at the docks. He won't like this. Please hurry up and... Thomas was rudely interrupted.
His driver and fireman laughed. Phew, sniffed Thomas. What a pong! He was glad when they were speeding along the beautiful coastal run. As they approached the lighthouse, they saw a man waving a red flag. What's the matter now? High tides are damaging the track, reported the man. I've marked the spot. We'll go and inspect, said the driver. It would be dangerous for heavy engines like Henry, agreed the driver, but for Thomas it's safe enough. The guard left a red oil lamp by the damaged track to warn engines. When we get to the docks, I'll tell them to close the line. Henry was waiting anxiously for Thomas's trucks. Wah, you're late and that smell is making me ill. I can't help it, it's the fish, replied Thomas. And there's danger on the rails, that's why we're late. <laughs> you're the only danger on the rails, Thomas. Now stop wasting time and get your trucks hitched to my train. Thomas's driver and fireman were in the yardmaster's office when they heard Henry's whistle. There he was, steaming out of the station with his long, heavy train called the Flying Kipper. What route is Henry taking tonight, asked the driver. The coastal run, it's the quickest. But I told you, that's dangerous for a big engine like Henry. The yardmaster quickly phoned the signalman. Henry roared past the signal box. I'll soon make up for lost time. The signalman was answering the telephone but couldn't hear the warning. By the time he did, Henry was far away in a cloud of steam. But when Henry reached the coastal track, his hopes for a fast run were dashed. Fog floated everywhere. I can't see, cried Henry, nor could his driver. When he could, it was too late. As soon as the tide was high enough, Henry was craned out of the water. Engines don't swim, Henry. You were meant to deliver fish, not swim with them, said the fat controller. You should know that by now. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. When Henry arrived at the docks, Cranky the Crane looked down at him disdainfully. My, my, Henry, I expect you'll have some fishy tales to tell, but take my advice, have a long hose down first. Ha! hissed Henry, but there was worse to come. Look, said a child, they've caught all this fish and a green whale too. It's not a whale, it's a monster. Henry was most upset. Thomas now felt sorry for Henry. Come on, your driver says it's time for a nice hot washdown. Then you'll feel much better. And Henry did. I'm sorry I was rude to you, Thomas. Oh, that's all right. But can you smell something? What, what, what? asked Henry nervously. Fresh air. Oh, yes, replied Henry. 